Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a short story that I read uh, because it is Short Story Tuesday, a fun day to talk about all the short form literature that is uh, zany or just just strikes me as um, as different. And today's short story is all about uh romance and fighting and ireland which is a very strange place i am referring to the quiet man which was written by maurice walsh and published in 1933. for those who don't know maurice walsh was an irish writer uh, who lived between uh, the late 1800s and mid the mid 1900s uh, he was known for writing books, short stories, um, other types of literature that focused on Ireland um, at different periods of its of its history, and uh, wrote a lot of uh, what some people have called like romantic nationalist literature. So often focusing on Ireland and how Ireland is great and uh, the people of Ireland, um, which um, makes a lot of sense given that. Uh, you know, you, you have a lot of other Irish authors doing similar things at the time, just trying to fight for Irish independence and uh, uh, making note that the United Kingdom sucked for what it was doing to Ireland and wanting a united Ireland, among many other things. Um, but uh, others have noted that like his work has fallen by the wayside as other, um, as like the romantic nationalist and uh, his type of writing has has gone out of style. So uh, not a lot of people know who Maurice Walsh is, but I am intrigued by this short story. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about The Quiet Man. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So The Quiet Man focuses on a man named Sean Kelvin, an Irish uh, sort of farmer type who goes to... Uh, America and does work there, whether uh, in terms of like boxing and doing steel work around Pittsburgh. Uh, and he returns to Ireland a short while later, uh, changed for the most part. Um, people notice there's an unusual quality about him, like that they don't like they're they're not they're hoping he doesn't get angry because who knows what's going to happen when he's angry. But for the most part, he's quiet and easy to get along with. Uh, but when he gets back to Ireland, he notices that the family farm has been bought after his father died, uh, and it's gone to a man named Liam O'Grady, who has a pretty sizable farm himself. And so Sean sets about buying a, a small tract of farmland to, for which he can till and do work on. Uh, and at the same time, his friends are noting that he should probably be getting married soon. Uh, but Sean's like, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not really interested in getting married. So he uh, decides, you know, not to pursue that. But interestingly, the story notes that fate has uh, something different for him in mind. As it turns out, uh, Liam O'Grady actually wants to get married to uh, a woman who was recently a widower, and he views like that her dowry is pretty huge, and so he's going to try to claim it when he gets when he gets married to her, so that she can get his. Uh, uh, he can he can get her farmland. She does not seem keen on marrying Liam because he lives with his sister, and uh, Ellen O'Grady, uh, 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 like she like the the woman in, uh, doesn't want to be in a house where another woman already lives, and so Liam decides that he's going to marry Ellen off uh, to Sean of all people. Sean seems inoffensive and. Uh, like it, uh, Liam can bully him into marrying his sister. He also promises Sean, Sean, like two hundred pounds from a recent harvest that will um, allow him to have the dowry that he needs. After getting married, Ellen and Sean fall in love. Uh, Ellen, or Ellen, or the story notes that like Ellen really enjoys admiring Sean and the the things that he has to say. And Sean is made softer as a result of all of this. Uh, but Ellen is very concerned about the dowry because Liam does not seem to be paying it. She keeps nudging Sean and he's like, I'll get to it, although we don't really need his 
uh, his money, and it's, it seems like a really small dowry when you think about it. Uh, but Ellen keeps pushing to him, and he keeps asking, or he, he finally decides to go ask Liam, and Liam pushes him off and says he'll, get, he'll give it to him uh, later. But then after one uh, one day where, like, they know that Liam has the money, uh, Sean asks him, and, and, like, Liam pushes him away, kind of embarrassing him there. Uh, and Ellen is is made furious by the fact that, that Sean doesn't seem to be defending himself, or really her as well. And uh, so they, they have a little bit of a rift growing between them. Uh, Sean realizes at this time that uh, the problem at hand is that prior to marrying Ellen, he did not break the O'Grady's. And so he decides that this is what he needs to do now. So he goes to Liam's farmstead and announces that he wants the dowry uh, that Liam has to provide. And when Liam tells him to go fuck himself, as Liam, as Liam is so, like, loving to do or he really loves telling people to do that uh um sean announces that he plans to give ellen back uh something that is truly going to embarrass him because that makes ellen like a divorcee at this point but also is like oh your family is not good enough for this farmer sean kelvin and liam gets frustrated and hands uh sean the money at that point but in an effort to show that he doesn't really need liam's money uh he has ellen turn on the thresher machine and just tosses the money in there which truly enrages liam because that is a great the greatest slight or one of the greatest slights that you can do against a man like liam and from there, Liam and Sean get into a fight uh, with the father, like the one of the priests of the area, noting that Sean is definitely someone not to be trifled with because of his time boxing. He's able to successfully beat up Liam in the process without being hit in return. Uh, which amazes everyone involved before announcing that if, if anyone has any problems with him to, to, to challenge him uh, rather than you know talking behind his back. And at that point, Sean and Ellen go home and the narrator notes that they are very much in love, although Ellen hit, laughs that she had to go through quite a lot of pushing to make uh, Sean a man here. And that's where the story ends there. In terms of analysis, there is a fair bit to talk about with this story. Uh, one of the ideas, the themes that Marie Schwalz is, is working with here in this story seems to be the idea of face or reputation, as it's, it's commonly known, uh, where in, in many cultures, um, really every culture, it would seem, there's some aspect of a face where you have a certain reputation and if someone embarrasses you, you lose face. If you embarrass yourself again, you lose face. And the only way you can sometimes save face is by... In getting into a fight and uh, like defending your good name against people who would wish to trash it, um, and for for Sean, like his rep, like he has a reputation like everyone else in, in the community. Uh, he doesn't really seem to care about other people, but his wife seems to care about other people. Um, and so by not by Liam not paying the dowry, this hurts Sean's reputation. Like he says, oh, I don't need uh, Liam's money. For him, it doesn't really matter to him. But for everyone else in the community, he's he's been majorly embarrassing uh, Sean by, by not paying it. And Ellen sees that and she she can't abide by it, be, possibly because she's she's different from Sean. Like she doesn't have his experience in life. So this, this community embarrassment means something to her, as I'm sure it would mean something to a whole bunch of people. And that since, like, I, I, I don't think Sean's fully accepted that he's married to someone. And so that his actions, like, hold, like, weight for his entire family now rather than just, just him. Uh, so there's a lot of community embarrassment, but there's also marital embarrassment because uh, Ellen can't stand that Sean is, is not defending himself in these ways. And so she doesn't really want to, to be around someone like that who's not willing to defend his own honor or even defend her honor. And so like for, that creates a bit of, of, of a rift in their marriage, uh, which I think Walsh does a really good job of, of setting up, putting that like that that fork in there that that makes it difficult for them to really move beyond that fact like that's going to be a hindrance to their relationship and at that point Sean realizes that something yeah 
something does need to get done. Uh, he, he realizes that his problem was not breaking the O'Grady's in the first place, especially when uh, Liam O'Grady had kind of bought, maybe stolen the, the farm from uh, Sean's dead father. And so he realizes that there's there's two things that he needs to do to save face. One is putting Liam in his place, but the other, uh, because it's clear that Ellen is unhappy with him, is putting Ellen in her in her place, so to speak. Um, which he can't. Which he, like he like I'm sure anyone could say like, oh, that's beating your wife, like teaching her who's boss. But I don't think that's necessarily how Sean wants to go about things. Like he has to show her that he's willing to stand up for her. And so, like, just simply being an aggressive male wouldn't do that. He has to be clever and and show her that uh, he's better than, than Liam and that he's not willing to take Liam's crap anymore. Uh, and the way that he does this is by approaching Liam at his farm uh, and, uh, you, you know, demanding the money. So, one, getting the money from Liam is a great way to, you know, prove his worth. According, at least according to his wife in the community. And then the other way that he, he embarrasses him further is once he gets the money, I think he's, he's on equal footing. But after that, uh, he, uh, he puts the money in the thresher machine and gets his wife to go along with it. One, showing Liam that he doesn't need his money, but also showing Ellen that he is above Liam now. That this, this is no longer a, a matter of being equal. It's a matter of being better than this, this scum person in your community who's, who's trying to bully you all the time and, and, you know, promised you money, but has, has failed to deliver upon it. And then at that point, they fight, which I feel is unnecessary in this story. Like, you've already proven yourself better than Liam. Fighting isn't going to really resolve anything and just feels extraneous. But it does feel like a natural progression of things. Like, if you had thrown someone's money in the thresher, now Liam has to try to save face. And so he ends up, uh, like, he ends up losing again in, in that process. But it does feel like the end, this is kind of toxic in, in the way that it's being told because it seems like Walsh is kind of arguing that violence is is the answer here that in order to prove your worth and, and not have your manhood like questioned you have to hurt other people uh, especially people like Liam which I don't necessarily agree with and I think is is actually you know uh, a path to getting further harm done to you and your family in the future and then another element that uh, Walsh talks about here is that of love uh, which I think he does really well. Like it's it's only brief, but he does you know remark upon it uh, of two people falling in love, in a, in a significant way. Uh, he notes that like Sean and Ellen grow to love one another after getting married. Neither Sean nor Ellen really want to be in a marriage. Like Ellen is kind of happy just serving her brother as as like a a live in spinster sort of person, uh, and and doesn't really want anything else beyond that life that she seems content with or maybe isn't willing to allow herself to feel anything else because her brother has been so overbearing uh which which makes a lot of sense and sean on the other hand maybe he's had a hard life and all he wants to do is live alone and not have to deal with the complications of of trying to you know uh, have a wife and maybe raise a child down the road, but things change for them as they as they begin to fall in love. Like uh, Sean is made more tender in the process, and Ellen it, just finds someone to admire. She has a positive male re relationship in her life, and uh, like she's <laughs> like even though women are supposed to talk more, as Walsh says, like she lets uh Sean do most of the talking because there's a lot to learn and a lot to love about that. There's an interesting quote from this that I would like to read to you. Women in the outside world begin by loving their husbands, and then, if fate is kind, they grow to admire them, and, if fate is not unkind, may descend no lower than liking and enduring. And there is the end of lawful romance. Look now at Ellen O'Grady. She came up to the shelf of Nakanor, and in her heart was only a nucleus of fear in a great emptiness, and that nucleus might grow into a horror and disgust, but glory of God, she, for what reason piled on reason, presently found herself admiring Sean Kelvin, and with or without reason, a quiet liking came to her, for this quiet man was so gentle and considerate, and then, one great heart-stirring dark o' night, she found herself fallen head and heels in love with her own husband. 
And I think that's a really beautiful quote because it it uh it shows that like, you know, there was that fear in Alan's heart that like being sent to go live with someone else and be married to them without really knowing them, like that would have been pretty hard for anybody. But she found that this was a man that she could rely on and trust and uh, had a pot, like was able to talk with him and, you know, slowly over time, love formed as a, as a result of that, which I think is really beautiful writing. If it's a little bit, you know, like weird with like, it's uh, like, you know, women are, are a certain way, kind of like old timey misogynistic -y at times, uh, which the story can't help but fall into the traps of. But I associate that more with the times that it's in, uh, just, just while noting that it, it, it can be a problem. Ultimately, though, this love is challenged by Liam and by the expectations of males living in the society. Uh, like Liam refuses to yield what he owes Sean. And it, according to this, like you're supposed to challenge people who do not pr uh, give you what you need and uh, s slight against you in, in society. And so because those expectations are Sean and because like, you know, Ellen is living in a society and that's all she's been told, like that harms their relationship because she can't see that, that according to Sean, like they don't need that money. And like in the end, like they don't need that money, but because those expectations are there, something has to give. And that something has to be Sean challenging Liam. Otherwise the relationship can't really continue it doesn't feel and i know that's a weird message where like you have to do something like that and prove your worth in order to be loved but you know that those were the expectations of society back then and it's really hard to get over that uh, i don't think maurice walsh is going that deep with it but it, it is lying there on the surface and, and is worth talking about and then there are other elements of the story that are worth talking about. I do like the old Western feel to it, how, um, you know, in this rural area, uh, Liam and Sean are coming into conflict with one another. Uh, and I, I, it, it, it does feel really cool. And it's, it's interesting because this was later adapted into a, a John Wayne movie, uh, which you wouldn't think really, really works given that it takes place in Ireland. But I guess the old West, th that atmosphere can exist anywhere if you're willing to to try hard enough. And then another another element of the story that I really liked was the surprise where Sean throws the money into the thresher. I was not expecting it. I thought Liam, he was just gonna challenge Liam and maybe fight him if necessary. But him throwing the money in there was just like an oh, oh crap kind of moment. Uh, really, really refreshing and uh, an interesting way to tell the story and for Liam to get one over, or sorry, for, for Sean to get one over on Liam later. Anyway, those are my thoughts on The Quiet Man by Maurice Walsh, a pretty wonderful uh, short story, one that I am going to recommend that you seek out there, as it is a, a pretty high quality short story and, and one that is really refreshing to read and has a lot of like interesting elements and themes. I didn't even talk about the, the element of God that I feel like is present there and, and is worth discussing. Um, if you if you want to talk about it, you know, you mention it in the comments below. We can have a discussion about this uh, about this story. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about the Quiet Man or Maurice Walsh if they don't know him already. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and Irish travels. Farewell.